I quite often get asked how I started programming and what I normally tend to do is try and interpret that question as uh, how, how would you help me program and I'll give them links to you know things like this behind me, this is w3schools.com or I'll tell them to read a book or go to college and the reality is I did none of that. When I started learning programming I didn't, well I did go to college but it, as you'll find out in a minute I dropped out. I didn't read any books, in fact um, I have got some programming books here. This is C++ programming, um, it's very very like basic, it tells you the absolute like variables, the very basics of C++. I probably read about half of it before I just didn't really understand it and just got a bit bored of it. Um, so no, I still don't know C++. Um, the other programming book I've got is uh, Java Server Pages, which I thought was a really good idea at the time, but actually um, it's a very old and outdated language. and. I bought this book because it's cheap, um, it's really long, it's 600 pages, it's really, it's old hat and there's no point reading it and whatever. I could have bought a book on PHP, um, you know, I, I could have done the tutorials on PHP, uh, in fact I went to college and I lasted three weeks because it was all just theory, it was all just, you know, my, my tutor said oh garbage in, garbage out and it was, it was all very much just about theoreticals and I couldn't really relate, as a non-programmer I couldn't really understand how that translated into what I was actually trying to do. Like if I was trying to make a web page, how do variables and classes and objects actually make any sense in the scheme of changing pages or whatever? I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk about how I learned programming um, and I'm also going to talk about how I turned that into like a, a job or a profession because I think that's quite difficult. I think a lot of people learn programming languages and um, they don't really know how to make the next step, how to turn it into like a job or a profession or earn money from it. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about those two things. So the first thing is uh, how I learned programming. And the first language I learned is a programming language called PHP, which is actually a web-based language. It's for making websites. And um, how I learned uh, this language goes a little bit like this. I needed to make a website. I was doing it in HTML. Like Nearly everyone knows HTML now in CSS. Like you, you get taught it in GCSE, IT, you know, it, it, in secondary school. It's quite easy to pick up. There's loads of uh, things online for learning HTML. You know, even when you're uh, embedding a YouTube video into your blog, it will often be in HTML. So you sort of get the basics of like how the tags work and things like that. And it's quite easy to use something like Dreamweaver to make a page like visually and then you can see how the HTML works. And when you need to do something a bit more complicated then you start like really drilling into the HTML. But actually what I was doing was I had five pages and I had like home, about, uh, projects, downloads, contact me and they were all separate HTML files. So when I did the layout of the page I'd have to copy and paste it every single page. So if I had like five pages that all wanted to look like the bottom of the page and the top of the page wanted to look the same, but the content in the middle was different. I was just copy and pasting the template into each page and then ed editing the content, which is not very good because every time you want to make a little tiny upgrade to the, um, the header or the footer of the page, you have to actually copy and paste it all over again. Like you have to take your content out and you have to stick in the header and the footer and save it. And if you've got five pages, it's not so bad. I mean, you can do it in like a couple of minutes, but when you've got like 20 pages, or you want to like dynamically create pages and it becomes a little bit difficult to um, to actually manage. So the first thing I wanted to do was um, put some content in the middle of the page. So I wanted to make a template and then I wanted to just be able to change what content is in the middle of the page and I started doing this with PHP. Um, my friend Daniel Evans actually taught me how to do this and it was very simple. He just showed me what to write and I just copied and pasted it. So. I got a hosting account with PHP support and I started my, own, my first PHP file. The first thing you do or the first thing like W3Schools will teach you to do is a hello world um, example which is you just tell the computer to output the text hello world and that's how you check that PHP works. Now I didn't, because I wasn't learning it the, the normal way, I didn't really use that, I, I just used that to test and then after that I used the, the code that Dan had given me which was uh, how to in include a PHP file. Now that's fine, you can write your your overall template in HTML and then you set like a bit of PHP in the middle and in that PHP you tell it to include a file. Well that's fine if you just want to include one page but what happens when you want to include like three or four different pages like you know when, when you click a different URL. So for that you use something called a query string. So you have uh, at the end of your page you might have like uh, page.php question mark uh, page equals and then you have like the name like about home uh, downloads can't contact us things like that and then you take that variable 
which is a query string parameter, um, it's actually uh, what PHP refers to as a get variable. And you can include a page based on that get variable. Now, you shouldn't take that get variable and put it straight in the include statement, because then you could probably do some dodgy stuff with that. So you do a, a select statement, um, and you you basically iterate. So you say, right, if, if uh, page equals home, then let's show the home page. If page equals contact, let's show the contact page, yada, yada, yada. So basically, that's how I started programming. And uh, it, it just evolved from there. Like the more complicated the website gets, the more you need to understand. So for example, the first things I uh, understood was how to use get variables, how to in include pages into other pages. And after that, you, you have to learn things like if statements, which are a really basic thing in programming. It's a switch, basically. If these parameters are true, then you do this. Otherwise, you do something else. So that's quite easy to get your head around. And then after that, as it gets more complicated, you have to look at things like uh, how do classes work? Um, how do functions work? How do different types of variable work? So it's, it's a really easy way to get into programming is actually have a project where you need to use programming. Now, have a project that you're actually really passionate about. Um, my website was, you know, it, what it was about was completely irrelevant. But the fact is I needed to make a website and there was no other way of doing it other than learning how to program. So that's how I got started programming. Now, how I turn it into a profession is a little bit different. So uh, I started learning programming in 2006, which I was 16 at the time. Um, as I said, I dropped out of college. I was working in a supermarket and um, I didn't really... I didn't really have any skills really from school or college or anything like that. So I started out just making websites and it's funny that um, word of mouth gets around really quickly. If you're any good with computers, like if you can tear a com computer apart and put it back together or if you can um, make a website, then suddenly everyone wants to know you and everyone has got a computer that needs fixing or a website that needs building. At least this was the case like, you know, back in 2006 where you couldn't just log on to Wix and build a website and drag and drop things, you know, it was actually a bit more complicated. and. It was a bit of a dark art getting on the web, but everyone knew they had to get on the web. That's really like how I got started um, sort of building websites for people is that people needed it. After that, you know, I was getting a bit bored of just making websites about things like um, builders and garden centers and shit like that. I was fed up. I wanted to make my own things and I wanted to learn a bit more about PHP and get a bit more complicated and start working with things like databases and login systems and users and stuff like that. So after that, I started making a social network called Farming Connected. And the idea was that farmers could get together and plot themselves on the map and then neighboring farmers could find out who they were or, you know, find out farmers from all around the world and you could share pictures of information and stuff like that. So I started learning a bit more and the code was horrendous, like really, really bad. Um, I didn't know how to use classes. So all the functions were in the same file, um, which is like really bad practice. It was really buggy, laggy, slow rubbish but the fact is that I actually made something it doesn't matter that the code was shit and it doesn't really matter that um, it was slow and no one else can read the code and it doesn't matter that it really had some security problems because it, it was only like 10 people using it so it didn't matter like it was never going to be a big thing you know, Facebook was taking off stuff like that it didn't really matter that it was crap what it looks like and what you can do with it are the most important things with a project like that uh, okay the code was rubbish but no one's going to see it because it wasn't open source so as long as people could click and make an account and actually do things and send messages and interact, it actually provided quite a good thing for my portfolio is to show people this. And uh, I, I was still, you know, this is in the space of three years that I went from like granny's restaurant sort of uh, web pages to making a social network. It took me about a space of three years to understand like the, the technology that I needed to use and things like that. I, I, was, I was still working like crap jobs, I was still stacking shelves and I was working in a dry cleaner and things like that and it really wasn't, I wasn't really getting anywhere with my career until I saw a job opportunity for a junior developer um, at a local company and they really didn't have a lot of requirements which was quite surprising because now a lot of places have a lot of requirements. They'll say right you need a degree, you need three years experience but this place didn't and it's worth trawling, it's worth really looking for jobs like this because the pay was crap. For a programmer, it was, I've never earned so little. I mean, I didn't earn much more than I would have done if I was dry cleaning full time. It didn't make any sense, like monetary, to take this, but it was a massive, 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 massive opportunity and a huge stepping stone in my career was to sort of slum it, to take this job where the entry requirements were just, you need to know HTML and CSS and JavaScript, which I picked up JavaScript along the way. So I took my CV and I went to the job interview and they said, what college did you go to? And I said, I didn't. And they said, what were your GCSEs? I said, I haven't got any. And I told them 
um, my experience, my story that I'm just telling you basically, they said, what have you got to show for it? And I was thinking, shit, they're gonna wanna see my code now. But I just showed them Farming Connected. They had a big projector and a laptop and I just fired it up and I said, look, you can do this. It's almost like a pitch. Like if you're pitching it to an investor or something like that. And they bought it and uh, I think I went to the job interview on the Thursday and then the Monday I got the job and a week later I started. I was making storefronts for the biggest mobile networks in the world. So if you can think of a mobile network, whatever provider you are using now, I probably did some work for them. Um, it was mainly storefronts, like if you were gonna buy ringtones or wallpapers in, in those days, people bought wallpapers for their like feature phone. And over the two years I was there, the business evolved from just doing like uh, wallpapers to things like uh, actual full track audio, like downloads were coming, it was the iTunes era and everyone wanted to jump on board. And I learned a lot. Um, I stopped programming PHP because I didn't need to do it. They were running ASP Classic, which is VB6. So I had to learn Visual Basic, but it didn't take long to pick up. Uh, the hardest thing to pick up with Visual Basic was all the bits which I'd taken for granted in PHP to be able to do. I was in the deep end a little bit. I learned the hard way. And the other thing that I hadn't really, well, I had done a lot of, but I was crap at was databases. So I was trying to make databases, like relational databases, and they were rubbish and I was it was really showing my immature side. They taught me how to do normalization, relational databases, uh, it taught me about efficiency, um, code structure, um, code reviews, uh, testing, you know, so many things that I didn't know. So just that one leap of faith of, and I, I honestly don't think I would have gotten that job if I hadn't had the experience of making that social network. So. You know, I could have stayed making websites for people in HTML and CSS and really, really basic websites, but the fact that I actually challenged myself to make um, to make a project, even though nobody used it, it, you know, it was never going to be a big hit, that was great because it, I actually had something to bring to the interview. Actually, I left there after two years because I had another project going on. So my friend Ollie, he started a, uh, a fan site for a computer game and he got quite a few people interested. He probably got about 4,000 members, um, but he, he was just using a free forum and he couldn't add any more features to the forum. Like he wanted to add a download system and he couldn't, it wasn't possible with this free software he was using. He needed something bespoke, like there were off the shelf things, but not many. So he needed something like custom built. So he came to me and he asked me, would you make a download system for me or, or a, a portal, you know, with a homepage, a download system, a gallery. And I said no, because I had too much on and I let someone else have a go at doing it for him. And I sort of pointed him in the right direction. I said, you probably need to use PHP, use MySQL. And I was sort of telling him the things that I'd used for my past projects and sort of how I'd learned to, to get to the point that I was. I said, do this, do this, do this, and you'll be fine. So um, I, I sent him off. He found someone else to help him, but when it came down to it and when they launched it, it was a bit of a disaster. It looked pretty horrendous because they didn't have a designer. It didn't function all that well. I could see a lot of mistakes that this guy had made that I had made previously. And I, I just felt like I could put a lot of what I'd learned to the test. So he had 5,000 odd members by this point. Um, so in the space of a weekend, I got off work on a Friday evening and by uh, Monday we'd launched, we'd completely relaunched and rebuilt the website. Uh, we threw away what this other guy had used and we, we started from scratch. That was that. We launched on, I think it was like the Sunday night and we had 5,000 users and then suddenly we had 50,000 users and today we've got like 200,000 users. It, it just shows that you shouldn't really turn your nose up at anything or turn anything down sometimes. You have to be really careful like what you say no to and it was definitely, definitely worth saying yes to in the end. That's pretty much how I turned, um, how I turned a hobby into a profession and also how I started my hobby which was programming. So um, after, after all that um, and I left uh, for Styles and then I worked for myself for, uh, well, since 2011 to now, I've been working full time pretty much and I've been mainly failing. I've been mainly trying to find projects that I can work on that would be really good and uh, be another another hit. It's not always that simple. When when you're sort of a, a programmer and logically minded, you can't always think like business. Business has been the thing that's kind of been hard for me to learn. I can be a programmer, that's no problem. I can start a project and I can finish a project. I can manage a project, but actually running a business is the hardest thing. I've had a lot of projects which I should have ended sooner, and I've done a lot of projects which I ended too soon, and um, it's really been quite an education. I think I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of um, business and being self-employed. Um, that's all for today. Uh, I might do some PHP tutorials, just depends on what 
uh, what sort of reaction I get to this video, whether anyone's interested in and perhaps we're going through step by step like how I learned PHP. If you've got anything that you're interested in that I've mentioned in this video, if you just put it in the comments and uh, I'll read it and perhaps I'll do another video.